Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin Sakia bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to do um, tips and tricks for my first job in help desk. Like, what were the interview questions they got? They asked me when I when I went and got my first job working in help desk. Obviously, if you do make sure you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Today I want to go over um, my first help desk job interviews. I'm not sure if you I'm not sure if you guys know, but my first job uh, was working IT support for an MSP company. So I work for a managed service provider and they asked me, they asked me questions that, um, that, um, were, were really strange to me per se. So I'll give you one of, I'll give you one of the, one of the things that they had me do, which is really awkward and strange, but, um, and actually wasn't interesting too. Uh, they had me record myself and I had to send a video to them. So I had to say I had to create a video showing as to why I should be why I should they they should hire me, and why I'm the perfect candidate for that job. So I literally sent a video of me of myself selfie like this with the camera. Send that video to them. Once you go through that process, they either call you call you for an interview or they don't call you for an interview. I did really well with that. I actually got called for an on-site interview. And that's where they asked me technical questions. So one of the questions they asked me was, if you don't know the answer to something, how would you find the answer? And literally I said, I would Google the answer or I would go to, I would go to our ticketing system to see if someone has resolved it in the past or I would ask for a colleague for help. That was question number one. Question number two was, do you have experience with Active Directory? Do you know what that is? And I actually said, yes, I'm familiar with Active Directory. I actually set up Active Directory from scratch using Server 2012R2. So I am familiar with Server Manager. I am familiar with that. You could go to Server Manager. You could go to the top right-hand side. You could do roles and features. You could install and set up Active Directory from scratch, which is what I did. I installed it from scratch. I created my own domain controller. Once that's created and that's set up and that's done, you literally go back to your Server Manager and you should have access to Active Directory users and computers, which is why what I'm familiar with. You go to that, and in that specific section, you have the ability to create user accounts, create security groups, uh, unlock passwords, uh, unlock accounts when someone gets locked out of their account, uh, reset passwords, things like that. So that was the answer I gave them. They really liked that answer. So that was one of my questions that they asked me about Active Directory. Another question they asked me is if I'm familiar with a ticketing system. And I said, yes, I'm familiar with, uh, at that time, uh, we use, I believe it was Remedy. And one of my previous jobs, I used Remedy. So Remedy was the answer I gave them. I used Remedy ticketing system. And I'm familiar with like opening, closing tickets, assigning tickets, uh, changing the SLA, if it's severe, the severity, if it's super high, if it's super low, familiar with, uh, if it's an incident, if it's a request. I'm also familiar with changing the status of a ticket. So like you, some some cases in some uh, work environments, you have pending, which means you're waiting for the customer. You have resolve, which means you fixed it. Uh, you have open, which means no one has done anything with the ticket. Uh, so yeah, so that was my answer to that question and I got that right. And then the next question they asked me was about how do I deal with tough customers? How do I deal with customers that are, that don't, they just don't get along with me, they don't like me or I don't like them, you know, obviously, if you're working with customer service, if you sign up for an IT support job, you have to have a good customer service. That's what you sign up for. That's just the reality of jobs. So I explained it, I explained to the manager, because I had, I had like three people interviewing me simultaneously at the same time when I worked for an MSP company or when I applied for that MSP company. And I said literally, oh yeah, like the customer's having, it's like the customer's giving me a hard time. I'm going to try to have empathy. I'm going to try to be understandable. I'm going to try to put myself in their shoes. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get angry. The reality of working with customer support is having customer service, having good customer service, having patience. And if you don't agree with that person, try to make, try to your, try as, be, as the best as you can to resolve the issue and make sure that the issue is resolved to the fullest. So I give them an actual example. So I worked with a customer when I was a field technician. So the Department of Education, so I was a field tech. This is my first job. And the customer had a ticket open and they're having issues with their computer. And they're having issues over and over again. And literally, I actually looked at the computer. I, I was a field technician, so I traveled. I went to the computer. I went to that school and I went to that 
location. I looked at the computer and I saw that it was actually faulty. So we ended up getting another desktop for him. He actually got a lemon, which is like a bad computer, just randomly. It just happened to be a bad that uh computer, unfortunately. So we had to get it replaced, which is what I did. I, I literally replaced the machine. And um and then after that, instead of me closing the ticket, I literally left the ticket open for at least two to three days. And I follow up with the customer. And they like the fact that I did that. They like the fact that I didn't close the ticket on the fly. Oh, it's resolved, blah, blah, blah. We're good now. I didn't do that. I literally let the ticket stay in the queue pending for two to three days. Then the third day, I actually reached out to him and I asked him, hey, can I close the ticket? Thank you, Kev. Yes, you could absolutely close that ticket. And that was a customer that I had like issues with like because he had three technicians try to resolve the same problem and they couldn't fix it. It literally, it was a faulty desktop. They tried fixing the hardware first, which makes sense. You will fix the hardware first before you replace the machine. And I think they got it, they got it replaced hardware wise. Like they changed the memory, they changed the hard drive, they changed the motherboard. I think like three, the ticket was open, was open for three times in a row for three different tickets. And it, it, he was still having the same issue, which is really annoying, like really annoying for him. So I understand where he's coming from. So I literally said, all right, I'm just going to get a brand new machine since it has a warranty on it. So they just changed the machine altogether because they wanted to do all the hardware stuff first, which they did. And still it ended up being it ended up being a faulty issue with that machine itself. So we just swapped it out completely entirely. And um, he didn't have any issues after that. So. That's that's basically my uh that was basically one of the issues I had issues with 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 a customer. Um and that's it. That's literally how I resolved it. And they asked me another question, which is what is my uh troubleshooting steps when it comes to resolving a problem? So like if someone's having an issue, like say you should say an example, hypothetically, multiple people are having issues, how would you resolve that or how would you fix that problem? So usually I usually I do, or usually what I say when someone's having an issue like that. I typically say, hey, um, so everyone's having the same issue or everyone's having different issues. So I want to narrow it down. Is it everyone having the same problem? If it is, okay, then let's figure out if this is an outage. Is this something is there something that recently happened? Was there like a Windows update that I'm not aware of? Or was there a change that happened recently that I'm not aware of? So I would reach out to my network team, my sysadmin team, anyone that's part of my team to see if any changes were made on the back end. Because sometimes if you have like a bunch of people having the same issue, something has changed recently. I don't know what it is, but something has changed recently. And that's the reason why they're having that issue. That should not be happening. And obviously, if it's a bunch of people having that issue, then yeah, something changed recently. If it's just one person having that issue, you, you, you use common sense. Okay, so so he's the only one having that issue. Everyone else is okay. So let's look at that machine and see what's going on. So we'll check like task manager. Maybe the application needs to be uninstalled, reinstalled. Maybe it maybe it's missing Windows updates because this has happened to me. Um, maybe they need to restart their machine because they haven't restarted the machine. So you want to narrow it down. Check maybe Event Viewer, see if Event Viewer see any 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 weird issues in Event Viewer. Once you narrow that down, then you could say, okay, this is an individual problem or this is a worldwide problem. You know, if that makes sense. So that's how I answer that question. They like the answer to my question. They actually asked me another interview question, which is uh. I actually got this one wrong because I did not I didn't know about this. So um the question was, and this is new to this is new to me when I worked back then because I didn't know about this, but now I know about it before I didn't know about it. So uh a customer is reporting an issue with their outlook, their outlook keeps crashing and it's not working. How would you resolve that issue? So with me. I would say open it up in safe mode, right? If someone's having an outlook issue. So I, I said, open up in safe mode. Like, that's, that's, that's a good answer, Kevin. Okay, what else would you do? I would run a repair on Office 365 or, or because at that time we're using um, Outlook, 20, outlook 2010 or Office 2010. I would just run a repair on that. I could uninstall, reinstall it, run repair. That's a, that's a good answer, Kevin. So you did safe mode. You ran a repair and it's still not working. How would you fix it? And I'm like... Huh? I ran a repair. I uh, uninstalled, reinstalled it. I even ran save one. Still not working for Outlook? Yeah, I kept still not working. And, what, and I uh, uncheck all the add-ons. I remove all the add-ons. And Outlook, I open up Outlook. Is that going to fix it? No, okay, that's not That's not the fix for it. What, how, what else would you do to, to fix that problem? I'm like, is there another? Is there something that I'm not aware of? 
that I'm not sure about or that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, okay, there's more. There's another fix for it. What, would, what else would you do? And I literally was like, I don't know what to say to that question because that's all the answers I had in my head. Um, and the thing that last thing I said was, what, what about other other customers or other users? Are they having the same issue or he's just having that issue? And um, they tell me, oh, uh, yeah, Kev, uh, none of them are having that issue. This person is just having that issue. I'm like, yeah, I'm stuck on this one. I have no idea what the answer is for this one. So I did all the basic stuff first. So I would not know what the answer is. And they told me, they told me, yeah, Kev, um, believe it or not, uh, Outlook's not working for this one because it's missing an update, a Windows update. So some Windows updates include Office 365. So that's the reason why this is not working. So I had this customer did not did not get the latest updates on their machine, which is why they're having Outlook issues. Outlook's supposed to open, but Outlook's not opening because they're missing a a uh, update. So when they when they show when they uh so what they showed me was and, and I'll show you. Uh, so what they did was they showed me this. I'll show you real quick. And this is the last um. This is the last answer. So this is the last question and answer for, for you guys. So I'm gonna just share my screen. So this thing called Microsoft Update Catalog. So if you do Microsoft Outlook updates, Windows. Um So there, there are updates in there. So if you see the updates, uh, there's a hot fix. So from what I learn is, um, there are many, there are a bunch of updates that I'm not familiar with, that come with with Office three sixty five. This is a long time ago. Obviously, is not. Obviously, it's not going to work now, but if you go to, let me, let me close this thing. So you go here, look at this. So you know, like hot fixes that I didn't know about. I was like, wait a minute, there are hot fixes for this. So apparently the customer that I, that I was working with, or the customer that was having that issue, and obviously I'm not going to know, I'm not going to know the answer to it, but the customer needed, needed a Microsoft update catalog. They needed an update. They needed a hot patch or a fix update on their exchange 2010 or uh, Microsoft Office Microsoft Office 2010. That's the reason why they're having that issue. So it's not going to be here because these are these are new one, newer ones. But if you go in here, see Exchange Server 2019. Sometimes you have to manually download the the updates. So you would go in here and like it's just click on one and then I'll get out of this afterwards. But basically, um, let's look at this real quick. They're all SQL ones. They have Skype for Business for 2015. Uh, they have Edge, so like this one, for example, right? So you go in here. You can actually download the package if you want to. This is one of the KBs is recommended. You can download the package. So there, there, there are packages and that are required for Office three sixty five to run, or uh, back 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 then was Office twenty ten, obviously. So once you have those packages, that's up sharing, your computer should run just fine after that. And I actually, funny enough, I encountered this issue later on in my career when I worked at a Japanese company. So I worked at a Japanese company, and this guy was having an Outlook issue, Sim similar to this issue. When I worked at an MSP company, the same the same exact issue, but this is Office Office 2013. And I'm like, why is he having that issue? And I looked at my computer because I did a compare and contrast, and my computer had an update on it that I installed on it because I needed to update my computer. I had to restart my machine. The executive, the C level person that I work with, was missing that update, and I went to restart the machine. That update wasn't wasn't part of the, the restart. So I had to manually install it on that machine. Once I did that, Office 365, or actually Office 2013, was working fine after that. I didn't know about that. So good stuff to know, good stuff to learn. So anyway, 
with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. And hopefully this video helps you out. Take care. Bye.